Hey again, fellow DIYers. I'm Doug, and in order to keep your water softener working at its best, you need to periodically add salt to the tank. Easy enough, but there is some confusion around what type of salt is needed and how much needs to be added. Follow along for some quick answers. To determine how much salt you need to add to your water softener, open the cover to the brine tank and take a look inside like this. The brine tank must always be at least one fourth of the way full. So when adding salt, a good rule to follow is to fill the tank to the halfway point. Some other indicators to look out for are if the salt looks dry and the tank is less than half full, or if the salt looks wet or the water level is above the salt. Now, in general, I recommend checking your salt levels every four weeks or so. And keep in mind that it is possible to overfill your water softener. Overfilling can cause bridging, which is when the salt at the top of the brine tank sticks together, forming a bridge and does not drop down into the tank. This means that your water softener will run out of salt, but it will appear full. Now that you realize you need to add some salt to your water softener, what kind of salt do you need? I recommend going with the salt with the highest composition of sodium chloride. So when you're looking, you'll find that there are three basic types of water softener salt, rock, solar, and evaporated. Rock salt, the least expensive, contains higher levels of insoluble minerals. Over time, this can result in a muddy tank, decreasing the softening efficiency while leaving impurities in your water. Solar salt, which is much cleaner than rock salt, is obtained by the evaporation of seawater and comes in pellet and crystal form. Both forms are the same, but for lower water consuming households, pellets can help reduce the possibility of salt bridging. Evaporated salt is the best option, as it's the purest form of salt at 99.99% .99 sodium chloride. You'll want higher purity salts, which will leave less storage tank residue, lowering the likelihood of salt bridges and salt mushing, and will result in less maintenance. On some softener models, you may also notice that the water softener asks you to select a salt type. The options are either NaCl, sodium chloride, or KCl, potassium chloride, when programming for the first time. Potassium chloride is a common salt alternative for folks living in areas with sodium restrictions or who have sodium-related health concerns. If your model does not have this option, you can still use potassium chloride. You only need to increase your hardness setting by 25% to compensate for potassium chloride. Choosing between salt and potassium chloride is a simple matter of personal preference. They're both equally effective against hard water, so you should feel confident in your decision either way. Adding the salt to your water softener takes very little time and effort. All you have to do is open the tank cover and pour in the salt until the tank is half full. Close the tank and you're done. It's that simple. And if you'd like to learn more water softener maintenance tips or are interested in more general product info, check out the Home Water Resources Hub on ecopurehome.com and the other videos in our DIY series. Thanks for watching.